In today's high watt soundbite, we're processing your drums. As engineers and mixers, we can have a massive impact, not only on the way drums sound in a mix, but the energy level they convey, even the feel can be manipulated. And I'm not talking about editing the original performance. We're just strictly talking about the effects of using external and parallel processing inside your DAW. It can be awesome. So let's jump right into a session and share some very simple techniques that you can hear and use to produce great sounding drums. All right, so I've just created a brand new session by importing a bunch of live drums from a past mix. Now, this will be a great example because it's an excellent performance. It was recorded in a very nice sounding studio and the engineer just did a spectacular job of capturing everything off the floor. So let's have a listen to all these imported tracks exactly as they sat in the original mix. All right, cool drum sound. Let's take a closer look. All right, so you can see that I've assigned all of these individual drum tracks to bus three and four, and I'm picking that up on an auxiliary stereo bus right here, drum bus, I'm calling it. So you can see that the input is set to bus three, four. And you can also see that I've added a few plugins to some of the individual drum tracks. When I can clearly hear the major effort that's gone into a recording like this, I will do everything I possibly can to maintain the phase relationship among those tracks. An excellent way of achieving this is to apply stereo processing to the entire kit through your drum bus. There's sort of a magic that happens when you send your entire drum kit into a simple compressor setup. And I'm talking maybe like four to one ratio, a slow attack and a fast release, something that's gonna allow all of the impact and the weight of those drums to pass through. I'll often follow that like I did here with a shelving EQ, boosting maybe two or three dB at three to five K all the way up. So let's have a listen to a couple of measures with the compressor and EQ inserted on the bus, and then I'll bypass and we'll listen to it without, so you can hear the difference. And we'll bypass the two processors there. So you can definitely hear that compressor working, but notice that we're not being very aggressive here at all. The purpose of this compressor is really to help us contain the drums in our mix. And no question, it gives it a little bit of an attitude boost or, or an energy shift because, you know, the ambient sound in the room has been increased a little bit, but not a lot. And we're absolutely using that slow attack on the, on the compressor. So we're allowing all of the impact and the weight of those drums to feed through. By applying this kind of processing over the entire kit, I'm definitely less inclined to start inserting plugins on individual tracks. And every time that's gonna result in a more phase coherent mix, particularly when you're talking about a multi mic drum kit like this. There are just huge phase benefits from processing the entire kit as a whole. Okay, so what happens if we wanna totally change up this drum sound and just go way more aggressive with it? Well, this is a perfect opportunity to use parallel compression. This is a very popular technique of taking a copy of a track, or in this case, a copy of a submix, applying a very different set of processing and sound to it, and then ultimately folding that or blending that sound back in with the original. The magic of this technique is that it allows us to add a completely different and new character to a sound without sacrificing any of the impact or the punch or, or, or any aspect of that original sound. Let's have a look. All right, so we already have our drums assigned to a stereo auxiliary bus right here. In this case, we can simply make a copy of that bus and insert some compression and EQ. I've already gone ahead and done this, so I'll make it available there. I called it smash all. For this parallel copy, we use almost the opposite settings on our compressor. In this case, we literally want to crush the drum sound. So we're going to set the attack of our compressor fast. The release will set kind of medium and the ratio up there, like infinity to one or 10 to one or 20 to one. That fast attack time on our compressor will virtually eliminate all the transients on that parallel copy. 
That is exactly what we want because we already have the impact and the weight of our drums coming from our drum bus. This can be very, very effective. So I went ahead and I made a copy of that bus that I was talking about and I put some extreme processes on it, just some heavy compression with that fast attack and high ratio and quite a bit of EQ after the fact. So let's have a quick listen to this parallel bus that I've set up all by itself. Let's have a listen to it soloed. Okay, that's really compressed, obviously. I love that kind of sound. The beauty of that is that well, I'm gonna now play our regular drum mix. I'm gonna start with zero of this room mic. And you can literally just keep pushing the fader up in your mix and add more and more room to your drum sound without losing the big impact that it has. It's so effective, have a listen. So you can hear the effect that has. I literally, at the end of that, I was pushing that fader right to like plus 12, and yet the punch was still there. It's incredibly powerful. I've cued the track to a tom fill, and I'm gonna play no parallel processing first, just the stock drum sound. Check it out. Okay, now we're gonna add that parallel in a big way. That is crazy. So I hope these simple techniques help you produce a better drum sound. Well, thank you for sitting in on today's session and I encourage you to please leave a comment or by all means, share a topic that we can do a whole session on. And if you like today's session, please consider subscribing to my channel.